Good evening all, I Rapstein with your Spider ETF wrap up for the weekend and today is Sunday and we are now at 7.35 p.m. Central Time on the 23rd of January 2022. So we're going to come in in the morning. The futures markets are nicely higher right now. The Dow up about 200, so we're getting some rallies going there. The problem, as you know, has been we get these rallies that keep fading. The market has turned into one where the people caught long are dumping as the market rallies. And that's something you have to think about. As markets break hard, what happens is people that get caught, especially in spiders, stocks, ETFs, they have a tendency, unlike futures traders, to hold on. And as the market comes up, there's natural resistance points in it. Now, admittedly, spiders and ETFs trade along the line of a futures, but because the leverage is so different, 50% leverage, unless you're buying these three and four time leverage vehicles, uh, it's basically a lot less of the pain whereas futures is 90% leverage, if you think about it. So it, it's a very different game. We're going to see the FOMC this week come out with their statement. Uh, everybody will look to see what they're going to tell us about the March meeting. Are they getting further along? Uh, what's going to be the dates possibly of the runoff of the balance sheet? We get the Bank of Canada. We got earnings coming out galore this week. I mean, a lot of them. Apple comes out at the uh, during the week. So uh, traders will certainly be all geared up on that stock. I know Apple's got a bunch of new products tonight. I was reading, I think it was Bloomberg, is already carrying articles about the, the new products that are coming out. But as usual, this is a mid-cycle. Now, they might do something with the iPod, the iPads, and some of the other vehicles. Other than the phone, maybe you get an SE version. But uh, if you're asking me, are there going to be big products in the phones, I doubt it. That's going to be a save for this, whatever they call their next big version of the phone. As we take a look at Freeport, I'm going to finish up with that. And here's the thing I want you to do. I want you to write me. What would you like me to replace this with so that we view another it could be a stock, a spider ETF. We rip it apart for five days with the charts, both on a weekly basis, daily basis, and we get rid of it. So I rely on you to tell me the ones you want. I am not willing to do the three and four time uh, leverage any of those you give me, okay? I'm a futures trader. I can do them in the futures, and that's where I'll do that type of trading. So let's get something that the general mass likes to see. Write me about it on YouTube. I will read them and I will make the change. I'd like to do it tomorrow. So that tells you tonight to help me along. We'll see where we go. So on Freeport, you can see what the market's doing. The trend has been up, but if you should take out now this right here, 4028, be careful. That could be the first sign this market on this rally wants to give something up. And as you know, we're going into the Lunar New Year in China. We have the Olympics in, what, three weeks now. Beijing is getting more Omicron cases. There's a lot going on. I read an article as to how China today, from their perspective, thinks how terrible we in the West have handled our cases. They, they say, compare the U.S. where you're approaching a million deaths to what they have with their lockdown policies, and there's no comparison how more effective they are. Okay, but we're a democracy. They're not. The, and they, they point out that that's what's wrong with the democracy. The, the government isn't able to tell the people what's best for the people. Read these articles. They're out there. They're fascinating when you read them and have an open mind. Don't read it as an American. Read it from the other perspective. Okay. So as we, as we keep coming in here, we can see the Freeport McMahon, you have to watch what that is doing. Where are you stalling? You're stalling out against the upper bowl. When you've been in the background, I hear that with you. That'll go away in about five seconds. As you can see, the resistance right up through there. If you break, look for the 18-week average of closes to be your support. Markets rarely stay over a Bollinger Band. It's a natural resistance point. And with it, the momentum has dropped down. So you have momentum turning down. You still have the bias up. And the key in the market is 4028. If that's taken out, I'm earmarking that I think you're going right back to 38, 32, and the market will try to regroup there. Hear that noise? It's gone. That's my fault. I shouldn't have left that on. KBE, you went up over the past three weeks to the upper Bollinger Band. What do I teach in my enhanced course? 
If you don't know, at the end of this video, I'm going to put up my ad for my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Folks, I think it works better in spiders, ETFs, and stocks than it even does in futures. And I think it works phenomenal in futures. So that gives you an idea. It's the combination of how to use momentum with that. And I created an eight video course. It's inexpensive as can be. I think you get your doctor's degree in this and you'll start looking at a chart and saying, hold on, I don't think I wanna be short down there. I don't think I wanna be long. I'll use the other ways to come into the market about how I'd wanna trade. In XLI, you have momentum down, but the trend is up. You got to a point where the momentum has turned down. So you have the bias down, you have the momentum down, you have the trend up on the swing line, and you're really caught between the upper and lower Bollinger Band areas in the chart. You began that here, went to the top, came down to that zone, went back up. You're really going nowhere. It's more of a trader's delight than a trend delight. The energy sector still bullish. You can see where the market's at. You don't buy Bollinger Tops. You actually come out against them and you reposition yourself waiting for breaks. Now, what kicked this market up is I'm forever talking to you about understanding crossovers and moving averages. When the 18 week got over the 200 here, the goal was at least the Bollinger Band and you got to it as you can see. And now I, I can see it fighting there but you don't buy up there. There's better places, better chart patterns, I would think, to come in on. In SPY, I should have taken this arrow and had a point down. You now have a lower low, higher high. You are not trending. The trend ended, and if you take a look at your Bollinger Bands, good spots to come out all the way against those tops. That's why that course is so darn important. Emerging markets. When you get an uptrend, and that's what you did here, you started an uptrend, let me get rid of this, with higher lows and then higher highs, all you're looking for, because you're coming from down here, the combination of the 100-day average and the lower Bollinger Band, is the line in the sand, the 18-week average of closes. Charts like to have neutral spots. I believe the 18-week, the 18-day, the 18-month, they all fit in to do that. Some traders like the 20, the 21, I like the 18 for experience reasons. I've done this 51 years, I believe it's a better number. Okay, that's the resistance point. You can see what it's done. Now, a close over that will get me bullish. No ifs, ands, or buts. I need momentum to just not turn back down. I need a close over that number without getting back under 4816. That would turn me bullish. Is there anything to get me bearish here? No. In gold, I'm in the bull camp. Higher lows, higher highs, first target, 173.84. I see the market, I'd like to get a crossover to give this market the thrust on that jet engine to kick it. You need this, 168.06 to cross over 168.93. What would destroy the uptrend is taking out 166.86. It would not turn the chart trend down, but it would absolutely blow out being long the market. So until that occurs, I'm in the bull camp. I am in the bull camp in GDX. I think the traders are buying right here now at the 3158 area. I think their stop is going to be 2961. That's what I think's going on. And I think they're looking for this combination of the upper Bollinger Band and the 100-day average. Now, obviously, this will go nowhere if gold doesn't go anywhere. This is the gold in the ground, so to speak. I know it's miners, earnings, and like, but that's how I look at it. ARC, it's a trip to nowhere. Uh, the, it was $160 last year, right? It's, it's right now 70, it hit 71.49. I hear there's inflows coming into it as bottom pickers are showing up. I wish them the very best. I don't see any reason to do that. I understand I, I would not tell you to go short under a Bollinger Band ever. So I can see the argument there, but I also see that this market can be in for another level of pain as the 18-week average looks to me like it wants to cross underneath the 100, which I think just drives the market to new lows. In Amazon, look at this correction. The retailer is just feeling it. 
On the daily charts, I kept pointing out that, you know, January's typically never a good month for retailers. It's when the returns happen from Christmas. Uh, you don't have a lot of stock. That's the typical thing at this time because the supply chains, where the sales going to go, and you're coming down and you're coming down fairly hard on that. Apple. Apple could get all the way to the 159.35 area before any support is found. The market's got momentum down. The trend is down, but the bias is up. So I'm looking for the 159.35, if it gets there, to be an area where it attempts to hold. Tesla, we had that run-up after Elon finished selling his stock, and now the market backing off into the 18-week average. Trend down, bias up, momentum down. In plain English, the chart's a mess. TLT, this is a spot to have covered shorts, and I said that in my updates. This is the spot where you now, and I know this is so out of vogue, but I don't think you want to be short now. The combination of a 200-day average lower Bollinger Band often results in an attempt at a bounce. Now, get back up to the 18-week average of closes. We can take another look. Momentum is down, bias is down, but I think you're into a support area. Sorry about that. That's where we finish. Now, I'm going to hold my live webinar this coming Thursday at 12.30 p.m. The invites have not yet been sent out. They'll be sent out starting on Monday to pre-register. Just grab your cursor, move it up to the top here. You'll see an icon show. Click on it. You'll be all registered. Fill out all the information. Away you go. First come, first serve is how this works, and it does fill. So I hope to see you all come Thursday. You might want to take a look at this for your enhanced Bollinger Band doctorate, as I like to call it. I'm Ira. Have a good evening. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time and on a chart it will offer on the top part resistance on the bottom support and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches on to that band goes up or goes down. Well how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that mine do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.